now that Allah Azza wa Jal has exp- expressed His power, His dominion, His ownership, and our dependence on Him, now the subject takes an unexpected turn. لا يتخذ المؤمنون الكافرين أولياء من دون المؤمنين. Believers should not take. لا يتخذي. See the كسر عند ذا. لا يتخذي. It's لا يتخذ. It's سكون. Which makes it فعل أمر of the غائب. What that means is they should not. Believe the believers should not take disbelievers al kafirin as awliya. Awliya is the plural of the word wali. Wali means a protective friend, someone you can rely on in times of trouble. They should not take disbelievers as people they can rely on. This was said because Muslims had long-standing relationships with well, who we call kafar very easily. We call the people of Quraysh kafar. This was uncle kafir number one and auntie kafir number two for them. This was their cousin. This was their best friend. This was the guy they went to, you know, they went to go like, you know, slaughter camels with and whatever they did back in the day. They did it together. Okay? These were their buddies. And now they've become kuffar. They've become kuffar. When you come to Medina, there are people that have been Jews and Christians their entire lives. And they recently just became Muslims. And their best friends hate the Prophet. Their best friend for life, their buddy, hates the Prophet Wasallam, Right? But that doesn't immediately change your relationship with them. You're, you're, you've been friends with them your entire life. And you know what happens with friends. Friends talk about stuff you can't talk about with your parents, you don't talk about with your employer, you don't talk about anybody else, but you can open up to some very close friends. And if you've been friends for life, then that's very possible that you'll open up to them. And you'll expect them to, you know, uh, support you and be with you, etc. The messenger is being told, or through him actually even, the Muslims are now being told in Qur'an, look, those are your friends, yes. You can have, you know, a rifq with them, closeness with them. You can lean on each other, you can be friendly to each other, you can even have love among them, it's fine. But you can't rely on them. You can't look, for them for, look to them for protection. It's not healthy. You, you should not have that relationship with them. Awliya amin dunil mu'mineen. Then of course, Muslims are a growing entity, in Medina even. Muslims are a growing entity. There are other entities around that are much more powerful even at that time. Even at the time of, you know, when, when these ayat are being revealed, this is third year after Hijrah. Muslims are still not completely established as an entity. So maybe it's in our strategic advantage to have some allies or protectors and things like that. And Allah says, no. You need to understand, you, you shouldn't look for any other awliya other than myself. لا يتخذ المؤمنين مؤمنون الكافرين أولياء من دون المؤمنين looking for protectors or protective friends other than believers ومن يفعل ذلك and whoever does that فليس له فليس من الله في شيء then it, you will find nothing in, with Allah ليس من الله from Allah he'll get nothing at all فليس من الله في شيء interestingly فليس من الله في شيء له he doesn't get anything from Allah at all but the he is not mentioned. He's not there. The who is not mentioned. This is a, a sort of style in the Arabic language. It is as though Allah is saying he's so offended by that, he doesn't even mention the guy. He just says literally like this. So there's nothing at all from Allah. He doesn't say there's nothing at all from Allah for him. Because Allah does not dignify him with his words. Just nothing from Allah. Just know that much. Okay. إِلَّا أَن تَتَّقُوا مِنْهُمْ Except if you're trying to protect yourself from them. اِتَّقَى يَتَّقِي اِتِّقَاءً وَتَّقْوَى Did the mic, mic fall? Is the mic okay? I think it's okay. Why are you panicking? Oh, okay. إِلَّا أَن تَتَّقُوا مِنْهُمْ If you are trying to protect yourself from them out of the spirit of tuqa. Tuqa in Arabic is from, it's actually a masla, it's an infinitive. It comes from wiqatan. The original word is wiqatan, it's mithal, so the wow gets replaced with the ta. It's an unusual instance in Arabic. From waqa yaqi. Uh, means protection. So if you're afraid from them, and out of protection, you have a relationship with them. Now see the word illa here? What this implies is, you can't have wilaya, but you can have some relationship with them. Because wilaya has already been negated. So the exception is maybe you can have some relationship with them where you're afraid they might harm you, so you can have peace treaties or, or you know, things like that. This ayah predominantly is talking about, you could call it international relations. It's not talking about your relationship with your neighbor. You know, the guy lives upstairs apartment from you, and like, oh, kuffar, hmm. 
No, we, I can't say hello to him. Like, it's not what this guy is talking about. The Sahaba had very cordial relationships with Christians and Jews. They did. Throughout their lives. But this is talking about as a matter of politics. Uh, understand these ayat are in a state of war. They're coming in a state of war. So when believers are addressed collectively, and then disbelievers are talked about, it's talking about Muslims versus the enemy. In that state of battle. And what should and shouldn't be the case. And in that state, you may have personal relationships, but they may have allegiances elsewhere to their armies, and they'll use that personal relationship to spy on the Muslims. We can't allow that. Okay? And if you are forced to have a relationship, it better be some kind of protection from, in terms of a treaty and things like that. Now, there are some factions of the Muslims that have the ends with them so that you can attack them later, etc., etc. That's not what the implication is. Because, you know, at the end of the day, our deen is about clarity and honesty. You know, and we don't... If, if someone can take those meanings... Those meanings that clearly negate other standing principles of the religion, then we can't accept those kinds of meanings. You see what I'm saying? So, illa an tattaqu min hum tuqa. By the way, Bani Israel had some rulings like that. They had some principles where, you know, if you are, uh, it's okay for you to lie or deceive someone who's not a believer for your own cause. Muslims don't have that. Because this is the very same surah that we'll say later on, laysa alayna fil ummiyina sabil. The Bani Israel had said, oh, you can make a case. We don't have, we're not responsible to commit crimes against Ummiyin, these, these Gentiles, these unlettered ones. There's no harm on us to do that. It's, it's okay for us to, you know, not pay them their wages or, you know, lie to them and cheat them, etc., etc., con them. It's okay for us to do that because we're not sinful for hurting a kafir in their sense. How would we be any different if we had the same attitude? Oh, it's just kufar. It's okay, we don't have to worry about that. This is specifically in matters of protection, you can have some form of relationship with them, which is less than wilaya. This is why illa at the end is there. It's less than wilaya now, but some, some kind of relationship you may still have with them. And then Allah says, even that much, you should, if you're so afraid of them, maybe you're forgetting something. Well, you have Allahu nafsahu. And it, Allah is warning you of Himself. Allah is the one extending His threat to, to you. Tahdeed in Arabic comes from hadar. Hadar is one of the many words in Arabic for fear. But specifically, it is fear of something impending. Hadara is to do something to get away from an impending danger. Like, you know, if lightning struck and you hid behind a door, or you heard a loud noise and you jump back, this is Hadar. You Hadar, Allah is warning you of the immediate threat, which is who? Himself, if you, if you disobey Him. If you're so worried about being protected. Well, you have, Allah is putting things in perspective. See, the ayat end towards the end, they end with Allah's power. They began with this declaration, Allahumma ma'alik al-mulk tu'tin mulka man tasha. So it's, it's Allah is saying, yes, there is that exceptional situation, but you better try and get out of that situation ASAP. Because the real entity you should be worried about is myself. Wa yuhadhirukumu Allahu nafsahu. Wa ila Allah al-masir. And to Allah alone is the place of return. Sara yasiru. Sayran. The, 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 the ism, dharf from it is masir. Masir. The place of return. Sara is actually used when you come back to some place eventually. In Urdu they have an expression, Lord ke buddhu ghar ko aay. Right? Or in Punjabi they say, jithe di khoti, uthe yaan khaloti. Right? That's what they say in Punjabi. But the idea is you go, you went on a long trip, you were out and about, and eventually you ended up where you were supposed to. Finally you came back. This is Masir. Wa ila Allah il Masir. And to Allah alone is the eventual place where you'll go around, do your thing, think you're free, travel the world, but at the end you're going to come back where you belong, back to Allah. It's the final return. That's why some translations say the final eventual return. قُلْ إِن تُخْفُوا مَا فِي صُدُورِكُمْ أَوْ تُبْدُوهُ Tell them, say, if you are all going to hide whatever's in your chest, chest as opposed to heart, you know, qalb is Arabic word for heart. Sadr is Arabic word for chest. Imam Raghib al-Asfahani argues sadr is ism varf. It's a place, not a thing. Qalb is the thing, sadr is its place. Which is bigger, obviously. Sadr. The implication of sadr, sadr here is, there's a lot inside you you're hiding. Qalb is small, sadr is big. So you've got a lot hiding inside you. Whatever you're hiding, ma fi sudurikum. Or you expose it, whether you hide it or you expose it. Has this been mentioned in Baqarah? Is this review also? You know, 
يحاسب كن به الله. Here he says, يعلمه الله. Allah will know it. Allah will already know it. This is جواب الشرط. يعلم. That's why it's got a sukun on it, right? يعلمه الله. ويعلم ما في السماوات وما في الأرض. And he knows whatever's in the skies and whatever's in the earth. والله على كل شيء قدير. And Allah is in complete control over all things. This is actually reminding, this is telling the, the person who Allah gave the window to. The window was, look, you can for protection purposes have some kind of cordial relationship with them. But if that relationship makes you feel safe and you start fearing that, or you start actually taking them as awliya, then you're not taking Allah as the real threat. And whether you, whether you have that fear of Allah in your heart or not, Allah will know. Because nothing gets hidden from Allah. وَيَعْلَمُ مَا فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَمَا فِي الْأَرْضِ وَاللَّهُ عَلَى كُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدِيرٍ يَوْمَ تَجِدُ كُلُّ نَفْسٍ مَا عَمِلَتْ مِنْ خَيْرٍ The day on which every single person is going to find whatever they did, مِنْ خَيْرٍ, of any good. Such a beautiful phrase. مَا عَمِلَتْ مِنْ خَيْرٍ He didn't say, أَلَّذِي عَمِلَتْ يَوْمَ تَجِدُ كُلُّ نَفْسٍ أَلَّذِي عَمِلَتْ He said, مَا عَمِلَتْ The difference between أَلَّذِي and مَا is أَلَّذِي is known. مَا could be unknown. What that implies is nobody remembers you did a good deed. You don't even remember. Allah remembers. You don't even remember what you did. And it's not just some particular good deeds. Min khayrin, any kind of good deed. You didn't, even, you didn't even realize it was a good deed. Somebody walked into the, you know, into your, uh, into the masjid and you just smiled at them like, hey, something goes. Just that. And you went and put your dirty shoes on. He didn't even think anything twice of it. On Judgment Day, he shows up and you smiled at, you smiled at a believer. You fulfilled the sunnah of a Prophet ﷺ. I'm like, what? I get that too? That's pretty awesome. You know? You walked in, force of habit, you walked into the masjid with your right foot. Ah, oh, you walked in with your right foot. I didn't even realize I was doing that. I was like, accidentally, you get it. Go ahead, take it. Min khayrin. And then Allah says, muhdaran. You know, in modern Arabic, ahdara yuhdiru ihdar means to bring something. And haddara yuhdiru tahdir, to prepare something. It comes from hudur, to be present. Ahdara is to make something present. That's why the brief version of that in English is to bring. To bring. But that's actually, the technical word for bringing in Arabic is ata yu'ti ita. Okay, to bring, to give. But ahdara, it will be, it will be made, it will be presented. It will be made to stand. It will be made to, to be presented. Muhdar, now those of you that know self, ahdara yuhdiru ihdaran fahuwa muhdir, uhdira yuhdaru ihdaran fahuwa muhdaran. There's muhdaran over here. It will be made to be presented. It's like your deeds are gathered and now they're made to stand in front of you. Muhdaran. This is all your stuff. So none, none of it gets away. It's like the implication, some of my deeds might get away. It's all captured and brought in front of you and, and shown. وَمَا عَمِلَتْ مِنْ سُوءٍ That's the scary part. And whatever, whatever that person had done from any kind of nasty deed. I translated nasty deed on purpose. I didn't say evil deed, bad deed, sins. I said nasty deed. Su comes from sawa. Sawa means a corpse. It's called, su is called evil deed because a corpse is nasty. It's ugly, it's hideous. You don't want to look at it. You want to cover it up. Right? So, su is an ugly, nasty deed. They'll all be gathered, small and big. يَعْلَمُ خَائِنَةَ ayun. He knows the stealing of the eyes. Like a little glance over there. Caught that too. That'll be brought also. A little bit of a snicker. People say something under their tongue. I really hate your guts. You're so ugly. What's that? What'd you say? Nothing? Was sneezing. Right? <laughs> I have a funny sneeze this season. You know, you do that kind of stuff, all of it will come out. All of it will come out. I'm not backbiting or anything, but that brother's a real crook. <laughs> you know? Just because you said, I'm not backbiting or anything, that still means you're backbiting. It doesn't take that away. <laughs> you know? And then and people say, no, no, it's not a sin because I'm just saying. How is I'm just saying alleviating you from the sin? The angels were writing it down. He said, oh, he said, I'm just saying. Okay, I'm going to erase it. No, no, no. He's just saying. Tells the other guy, he's just saying. You know? It doesn't work like that. Whatever you may have done of any kind of ugly deed. 
tawaddu law anna bainaha wa bainahu amadan ba'ida he will want what they would do is translated as love yes as a, as habba yuhibbu and hubb also hubb is translated as love also incidentally hubb comes from hab which is a uh, grain and the arabs would love the grain why they're kind of in the desert this is life right so this is this is life itself that's why even actually in in uh, some arab countries uh, bread is called aish life itself okay bread is life itself interestingly so stuff they love now what uh, al wood actually is to love something more than anything else like when you have a kind of love where you, all you think about is this one thing this is called wood when allah says wa huwa ghafur wa wadud he's saying he has an intense kind of love for you where he's not it's kind of kind of a kind of love like out of sight out of mind kind of love he's concerned with you extremely and then he put it in the ism you know mubalagha for many may wadud right so he's extremely extremely loving for you it's not a normal love it's not muhib he made it far more powerful than that now here tawaddu this person standing on judgment day all of his good deeds are brought all of his bad deeds are brought they're standing right in front of him everything he remembers everything he doesn't remember just because you know in court nowadays these these executives get caught they take get taken to trial these enron scandals and all these scandals that they're after right and they get taken to trial do you remember telling your executives to do this what did they say i don't recall and i don't recall is the perfect like oh he doesn't remember oh that makes it okay on judgment day whether you recall or not it's on record here let me remind you it's right here it's all been brought none of it escaped everything got recorded right so at that point when he sees there's no escape he's only got one die, like a never ending wish what is it law anna bainaha wa bainahu amadan ba'ida if only there was some way that between him between it the ha refers to all of his sins and him by the way su itself is not feminine su is not feminine but ma amilat min su in min su in some say that all of the su combined sayyat is the ha others say no he himself he himself the ha is referring to him because nafs is feminine and who is referring to the sin others say no he is the person and the other way around regardless which way you go the thing he wishes for is there should be what between both of them amad we won't even get to ba'id yet let's talk about amad amad is like masafa and every masafa means distance except amad is not usually used for space it's used for time the longest possible unit of time in arabic is amad i'll say that again the longest possible like you have minute hour year decade century eon if you think of like endless unit of time to them the arab to the arab that word is amad like if you say you know how if you say man if i was to walk to china that would take forever that would take an amad it would take it literally an amad now we nowadays say forever for like oh it'll take me forever to get to the masjid that's like a 10 minute walk <laughs> right but i mean real forever like an endless distance and like the most this far possibly imaginable distance is called amad that would that's the amount of time it would take he says not just that the, my sins should be far away from me they should be at an endless distance that to just to get to them it should take an endless amount of time right it's time that he wants to be make it make endless cuz his turns about to come <coughs> and he's hoping that the secretary on judgment day says hey wait we're going to get his file they're a little far away and so it'll take a long time he he doesn't have to deal with the consequences of what he did and then amad is already endless and what is the law add baidan far away as though amad isn't far enough for him it's like amad itself isn't far enough he wants that to be baid subhanallah wa yuhadhirukum allah nafsahu and allah is warning you threatening you of himself it's like the previous ayah said don't take the disbelievers as guardians you better watch out for allah and allah reminds let me tell you why you better watch out for allah and so he ends the ayah the same way again wa yuhadhirukum allah now do you get why you should watch out for allah يُحَذِّرُكُمُ اللَّهُ نَفْسَهُ And at that point of terrifying us, Allah mentions His ra'fa, it's incredible. He says, no, 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 I'm not all angry. I'm not all scary. وَاللَّهُ رَعُوفٌ بِالْعِبَادِ You need to appreciate something about the word ra'uf. It's one of the most beautiful names of Allah. Beautiful names. 
Rafa is you see some you, you're watching like a lot of you watch late night television because you can't go to sleep and you watch those infomercials about you know starving children or you know people that are like don't have clean water supplies or people that are sick and things like that right you people see people in suffering when you see people in suffering your heart wrenches and want to do something to help them when you have that feeling you have rafa to see someone in suffering and to have the urge to want to help them is called Rafa. Allah is Rauf. What that means is Allah is incredibly compassionate and feels the pain of his subjects, his slaves. He knows what they're going through and he feels mercy for them when he sees them in difficulty. Allah is telling us in Rauf, he knows what we're going through. He feels for us. You know how many, I, I just got this long email by somebody. I'm supposed to respond. I'll probably talk about just this word. How, you know, my, he talks about how his, uh, he's fell in love with this girl, but Allah took her away. My interpretation of that is she probably got married or something, but I don't know what he means by that. Allah took her away. And I know it was not exactly halal, but why does Allah take, well, why does Allah make us love things and then take them away? It's not fair, et cetera, et cetera. Why does He care about us? Blah, 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 blah. Allah is rauf. Bottom line, Allah knows what you're feeling. Allah knows what you miss what you want, what you really like to have. He's compassionate. He knows what you're going through. That's captured in Rauf. You know how you say, man, my parents can't relate to me. My friends don't understand me. Nobody, nobody can relate. Rauf is Allah saying, I can relate. I feel you. I got you. This is Wallahu Raufun bil ibad. Of all slaves, of, of the slaves. He's Rauf of them. So yes, on the one hand, there is Judgment Day and this terrifying thing. And on the other hand, when you may fall into sin, I know. And I know you're going through challenges, and I know you're going through difficulty at the same time. And so when, when someone realizes that about Allah, Allah knows what they're going through, and that He's there for them, then a love is generated between them and Allah. This is one of the things, one of the names of Allah that will make you want to love Allah. Is one of those names. You know, there are some names that will make you want to fear Allah. There are some names of Allah that will make you want to respect Allah. There are some of those names that will make you want to appreciate Allah. Appreciate Allah's power. Be in awe of Allah. Then there are some names that just make you want to love Him. Rauf is one of those names. It makes you want to love Allah Azza wa Jalla. Because He knows what you're going through. You know? And so here, and, and by the way, by the way, just to make this closer to your, something you can relate to, your closest friends are the ones that can relate to you. That you can talk to, in solace, and they know what you're going through, and they'll give you good advice, and you don't have to, you have no inhibitions in talking to them. That lack of inhibition makes you want to love them even more. Marriages get ruined when husband and wife can't talk to each other anymore. When they don't understand each other's feelings anymore. When she says, I, I talk to you, but I don't think you understand what I'm saying. I don't think you feel, you know, you feel anything. You know? It seems like an abstract thing, you don't feel it. He says, what do you mean, what do you want me to feel? The AC, what do you want me to feel? I don't understand. Right? But it's actually a very concrete thing. When you have a friend that you can actually talk to, have a real conversation, and they feel what you're going through, and they can help you through it, that in and of itself will make you love them. And when you don't talk to them, you'll feel it. I, I, better, I want to go talk to them. Especially in times of trouble. This is, so it makes you want to love Allah. I brought that up because the next ayah takes us straight to love. 